Hello. Uh, well, I'm uh, starting off uh, <clears throat> this month in terms of, like horror with a movie that's not exactly horror related uh, uh, per se, though what happened is quite horrifying because it's based on a true story. And of course that is uh, In Cold Blood. Um, starring uh, Robert Blake and Scott Wilson as Perry Smith and Dick Hickok. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Hickok uh, was uh, cellmates with uh, guy Floyd uh, Wells, who you know told him about uh, you know a guy uh, Herbert uh, Clutter who he worked for on a farm and basically said, oh, there's like. Ten thousand dollars in a safe in his town, like he worked, and so uh, uh, Dick and Perry, you know, you know, uh, both of them are on parole or get on parole, and uh, essentially they uh, go to this uh, <clears throat> this home, the family of four. And everybody uh, in the house uh, gets killed because there was no money. And yeah. Uh, very horrific. And um, I hadn't seen this film in all, quite some time. Um, but, you know, this, the film, just seeing how everything just unfolds. And how they're able to get these two is very fascinating. It's uh, it's really cool, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's one of these uh, films where you know, especially back in this time, this is a film uh, straight to by a. Uh, Written and directed by Richard Brooks, who uh, also made uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Roof, and uh, Elmer Gantry, um, for which he won an Academy Award for writing Elmer Gantry. Um, but yeah, uh, this is one of those films where the director did his best to be as accurate as possible you know with the actual story in the case and not just take a bunch of liberties because you know that's what Hollywood does um, you know this is obviously based off of a book which I actually own uh, this was my grandmother's <laughs> and I able to get it uh, after she passed away but uh yeah i i actually have not read this book but um i know quite about uh, quite a bit about it and of course this was a uh, around when um capote the film was coming out so that's pretty cool kind of something where i I don't want to ever really take off take this off because it's just quite you know quite something um, but yeah it, uh, takes place in Holcomb, Kansas at least for the, the murders at least um, and just seeing how you know everything because at the beginning of the film you know they they go to the home they stop talk and then the next thing it's the morning and then people find their bodies and yeah they don't uh they they don't you know uh they don't show what the how everything transpired until later on in the film and like by the end of the movie after we've seen these two 
quite a bit. We know, you know as much about them as we possibly can. We then go back and see how everything transpired from them looking around to get to the, you know, looking around the home to see the safe and or find the safe. Which of course, there was no safe. They were lied to. And then how eventually, like, there's one, uh, one of them just went around, went around and just started shooting and killing all the family members. And now the other one was, well, he didn't, you know, you know, beyond, uh, like, f forcing and trying to get everybody and threatening and intimidating the family to, uh, do what they say and give them the their money and their the, the safe and everything and then you know they tries to you know, rape the girl which Perry's like no don't um yeah it's it's just uh and then just seeing how all this transpires and then Perry shoots and kills all of them It, it, it's all very interesting to see how all this transpires throughout the film and um, how the the film, you know, the trial, it's like it's on screen for a very short period of time because we all know they did it. And then they're sentenced and they go to prison, um, death row, the film they're like for five, you know, five years and then they're hung. Spoiler, but you know, it's a true story, and for the most part, it is faithful to what happened. Um, and watching some of the special features on this particular Blu ray, one thing Capote did not, you know, like about this film was how in the book, Truman Capote spends a good amount of time, um, you know. Uh, showing the lives of the family quite a bit as well as you know Dick Hickok and Perry Smith you know they all get a pretty good amount of time in the book which I do want to read but you know there's I'm already trying to read a bunch of books already so one thing at a time uh, uh, basically but you know he, he wanted he, he or he wished more time or uh, was shown with the family because we do see a, a little glimpse of what their like last day is essentially before you know they go to bed and then there's a uh, you know those two uh, go into their home and try to look for the money and everything and things just fall apart from there um you know we see all that happening we we get to see how all this transpires and it's very uh very well done on film especially back in those days when again they just want to you know usually for a film like this we just want to uh, show you the very gist of what happened but do it in such a way where for beginning to end, you're, I don't know, you're entertained in the sense, like, you know, uh, obviously what happens to the family is not entertaining, but, you know, them preparing and, you know, them going on the run and trying to evade capture and their eventual capture, you know, throughout all of that, you're really invested and intrigued. So maybe entertaining is not the best word, but you, I hope you know what I mean. Um, you try to make it engaging. And sometimes certain things in uh, in real life, when you're trying to document it for film, and not in documentary form, but feature film uh, for a narrative, uh, sometimes that's easier said than done. But for something like this, I you know, the whole thing, 
is very fascinating and interesting. Um, maybe I will talk about the film Capote at some point because Capote is an excellent movie. I uh, uh, it talked about uh, Foxcatcher, made by Ben Miller, who made Capote. Um, very good film, um, and I think it would be worth talking about. So who knows? Maybe next month or so I'll talk about it. I think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I just enjoy this film. Um, looking at some of the stuff I have and like, what haven't I seen in quite some time? I've also gotten some new stuff, so it's like, you know, trying to juggle new and old. And this was one I came across, my, you know, it's, a, it's October. Um, and while this is not a horror film, what happens is very horrific. It's horrific for the family. It's very unfortunate. And, um, yeah. Performances are truly fantastic uh, by everybody involved, but you know Scott Wilson, Robert Blake, and um, yeah, everything is just fantastic. Um, rated R, or at least I guess retroactively is rated R, because you know the rating system as we know it now didn't really come into existence until 1968 because 68 is when uh, Night of the Living Dead came out and it was like one of the very last films to ever get by without ever having to go through the, you know, submitting the movies to like the MPAA and to get a certain uh, rating on the film. So, uh, so that, ha that happened a year later. This came out 1967, same year as like Cool Hand Luke and uh, uh, many other films uh, that are excellent. Uh, Qu Quincy Jones did the music for this film. Um, yeah. Just a fantastic film. Um, and this is a great uh, Blu-ray. Um, you know, I think if you uh, don't own this Blu-ray, um, if you're able to, if you have like a, you know, uh, you live outside of America, North America, what have you, and uh, you have like a region-free player, I'd say uh, get this. Because it's a... Great film, great transfer, great sound, and everything. Just uh, obviously, if you live in North America, pretty easy to get. But you know, yeah, this is just a fantastic film, and has a lot of stuff like you know, has interviews with historians and um, a cinematographer, um, film critic, and jazz historian talking about the music as well as a interview with. Uh, with a, uh, a writer on the director of the film, as well as a interview with the director from a 1988 episode of the French TV television series uh, Cinema Cinemas, and um, a short uh, 1966 documentary uh, with Love from Truman, which features Truman Capote and two archival interviews with Capote, one following the author on the 1966 Holcomb, or his visit to Holcomb, Kansas, and another conducted by Barbara Walters in 1967. Um, and inside, Is 
the home in red. Here is the disc. Their eyes. Better try to move down or something. Uh, uh, here is a uh, Robert Blake, Perry Smith, and uh, Scott Wilson as uh, <clears throat> Dick Hancock. essay in here so yeah because criterion films usually have essays and for people who uh, have seen the walking dead will know this was a uh, herschel uh, yeah i watched the walking dead at some point Interesting how uh, a show like that goes on for so many seasons. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, he's really good in this film. Uh, as is Robert Blake. Everybody is good in this. Um, and yeah, that's really it. I don't have anything more to say. Uh, great film. Probably great book. Um, maybe one day I'll get this off, but you never know. It's been many years, and you know the film came out in two thousand five. So I don't know. This was, this book probably came out, or this version of this book probably came out in two thousand five, or maybe six. When my grandmother bought this. Either way, it would have been still fairly relatively new in order to, I would imagine, to put this on there. Because otherwise, I don't know why they would bother to put a little uh, sticker about the film Capote. Um, but yeah, great film. Uh, and so with that, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all are having a great day. Hope you're all having, we'll have a great weekend. Uh, hope you all take care, and I'll see you all next time.